And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Monday, August 30th, 2021. The markets have continued to move higher this morning and, in fact, moved straight up into what I believe could be the upper zones to complete this whole move. Now, what I want to do is just kind of reconstruct our Elliott or and Fibonacci levels to see where we continue to pair up and see what else I can add to give us a little bit of, of an additional indication of where could this market possibly be going? And what if I had to change the count, what would that do to these upward levels that we've been looking at as resistance? So first, a quick review. I'm leaving these as the completion point for at least up to the primary. And if it's completing the primary, it's completing the cycle, it's completing the super cycle. So that remains the same. And I have gone back and I've taken a look at where I possibly could have been uh, counting not as clearly and places where I could possibly change it. And I'm not finding it. So I have to continue to go with that this completed our move and, and the, all of the sequences up. And now we have started down in our corrective phase, but which can often happen at a major high, a major top in a market is that that first leg down is corrective and does give us confirmation that, yep, it looks like we're going to be going down. But what it ends up being is an A, a B and a C. Now this is a zigzag, but still a three wave structure versus a five. Five waves on our hourly chart would have given pretty strong confirmation that those highs were in and the next correction is in place. So, but that still may be the case. And let me explain how. This first wave being three waves down is going to now produce a B wave, which because it was a zigzag A, but only three. So zigzag in a three, that leaves the opportunity that this B wave is going to extend and likely be an irregular B wave. And what I mean by that is that the high of the B wave takes out the high of the previous advance. And that's right here. And it certainly has taken that out. That was at 44.76. And we're now a good, a good 50 points above that level. So we go have to count it out basically the same. A B wave is always gonna be an ABC structure, but that C wave is always gonna be five waves. So here we are, the A wave, the B wave, and then we've got a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. Now, the only other choice that I have as a possibility is that the three wave extends up to here and now, I may have the one and the two, and then get smaller degree filling out these and then putting a three up here. I'm not doing that yet. But if I leave the three here and the four here, then I'm looking for an additional five waves up to complete a sub minute wave five. Now, could that be extending? Yes, it absolutely can. And if that's the case, we have one, two, three, four, five, and maybe only that is a sub minute or sub sub minute one of sub minute five. So it's a one of five, in which case we get a two, a three, a four, and a five. All right. Now that's a possibility because the market didn't turn. It started to, but they held it up. Now, the other thing going against all of this today was the fact that volumes were low. Volumes were low from the start of the market this morning and basically remained low all day long. So we didn't have all of the players that we normally would have. There was plenty of buying, do not get me wrong, plenty of buying all day long. In fact, it was pretty easy to just kind of step in saying, I'm gonna buy it, you sat through what could have been putzing around there, but then it boom, continued higher. Then that worked out for most of the day. So 
in fact, it was kind of boring. I got to be honest with you. After we did this, these initial just like rally beyond belief up and above, well above 4,500, that was a, a pretty solid move up. And then it just kind of stuck around, stuck around, stuck around, came down a little bit and, and rallied back up. So let me kind of open. Uh, yeah, go ahead, computer. Make me the fool. If I can open this up a little bit, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five. Now, if we get an ABC down and it comes up again, then one of these is, is going to be the extended wave and it's going to continue to extend. So if this is one, two, and this is again, one, two, and this is three, four, five, or three, four, five, that's how it, that would work out. Now I want to start to put in some additional extensions, which are going to give us some additional resistance zones for this way up. I added one and I'm going to pull it all the way out to this monthly chart so that we can see where I've gone with it. And actually it's no, it's going to just be on the weekly chart. And I came down and connected the two to the three to the four. So, to give us what an intermediate fifth wave should look like if I have to move it from there. So that's where the five is right now. So it, it, it made a new high over wave three, of course, so all of that fits. But now we're gonna look at some of those Fibonacci numbers if indeed this count needs to be changed. But now I want to add what we do know, and I'm going to be putting in. Come on. Oh, computer's been a long day, I know. To there, to there. So there's our first, and that's for the C wave. The C wave got all the way up to 2.382%. So 238% of wave A is how high it got up today. Is that unusual? Well, yeah, kind of, but not impossible. Now I'm gonna add one more, and that's gonna be from this. Let me get, oh, come on computer, give me a break, please. Uh, when I go to open the window, it doesn't do it very well. Now I wanna connect this way to wave three down to this wave four. Now we have a little bit more for this sub-minute wave five, got up to 100% of wave three, but this one can extend more. So where can it go? Now we've got those extensions and those extensions go all the way up to 4604. But I think we, may be able to put in one additional. And again, I'm just gonna drop it down to a 15 minute chart. And now I'm up inside this final wave that we had. And C, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five. But if this is extending and this is a four, and this just like one, two, uh, one, two, three, four. So if I were to think that this has a fifth wave up to do, then I'm going to connect this to this, to this. Now we've got another layer. And we're still kind of just getting up to some already existing levels. And those are, if we extend the third wave up and it's still in progress. So in other words, one, two, one, two, three, four, five of three, and then another four and then an additional five. So we're still 
way up here. And look, all of these same levels we've been looking at remain 4,600 still in the picture. And there we have that double crossing up here. But that's between this wave five to complete that sub minute wave three against this minute wave five being 200%. So we're getting up into these upper levels and they're not, we're gonna to continue to use them because this is just an unusual ending to an extremely powerful rally that just doesn't seem to want to quit. Now, the fact is that it will. The fact is that it will pull back. The fact is, is that things will turn all the way up, all the different level, all the different sequences, they will have their day. Um, but what is continuing to propel it higher? So I believe what gets has to be added in to this whole uh, numbers game and this whole Fibonacci game is the fact that everything is electronically driven. Everything is algorithmically driven. So as these computers are out scouring in the individual stocks in Apple, in Amazon, in Google, and et cetera, et cetera, and all the rest of the stocks in the S&P, it's putting on trades. And that then, if it's the hedge, the hedge is in the underlying. So if it's in Microsoft, if they're buying puts, they're gonna buy Microsoft. If they're selling calls, they're gonna sell Microsoft, excuse me, buy Microsoft. So those buys in Microsoft push that price up. And as you can see, Microsoft was up 387 on the day. Apple was up $4, four and a half dollars on the day. Those carry a heavy weight in the S&P. So as those move up, that's gonna take this up. Whether it wants to go or not, it goes up. So as long as those algorithms are, are configured the way they are, and who wouldn't? Because I'll tell you what, if they're buying Apple here, it's because they've sold it via options at a higher price. So it's a done trade. They move it off if things get exercised overnight and they're done. They come back, do it again, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. So that's what I think has changed and how things get counted and how things move and how they extend. So that's why I step back and I have to go, well, if it is, it's an extended third and it has one more wave to go to be wave five, slip down in a four and zip back up in another five, which in and of itself would be expected to extend. So you can see how we continue to build going up higher and higher and higher. So I'm gonna leave everything as it is as we finish to count out this wave. And it it's, may look by the end when we pull it back out to an hourly chart, like, oh my God, that's so much higher than that. And that might be the case. But if what follows fulfills the Elliott requirements and what I'm looking for, and starts to break down as it would in, in Fibonacci, then absolutely, absolutely, I would expect it to basically just keel over and die. So if this ends up being my A wave, then, which it is, Fibonacci extensions actually uh what would i look for okay let me just change this around and go to come on just retracements and if i'm just going to be looking at retracements i should get those 0.236 that we're looking for for the b way but the 0 0.382 is right here oh, we just hit it today that was at 24 we just hit it today so what I can do, let me just take off some of these so that we can just see, and then I'll, I can rebuild them. Take off that one, and I'm gonna take off this one. So now I basically just have, and I actually can take off this one. Now, all I have on there is for the C wave. The C wave equals 1.382 of A, at 45.24, it got up to 33 today. So it met that requirement. So it's not all that bad. 
And now I, so still it fits within an irregular B wave. And irregular B waves can go higher. Irregular B waves can go as high as 1.618. And that takes us up to 45.55. Well, it's 20 bucks from today's high. It's not all that much. But now I'm wanting to just put more parameters around where are we and how far can we go? That's why I'll put in the extensions for this fifth wave. Now that comes from the third wave. And the third wave started right there. I'm gonna change this back. So now we're gonna, we're just rebuilding it folks. I'm showing you how I do it so that we all can see what our possibilities are. And go up to this third, down to this fourth. So we, we had overlap here and that all worked. And so we have this upper range, which it got met today. So 24 was met. And the fact that this sub minute wave five in the minute C wave equals 100% of the third wave at 45.32. Can it go higher? Well, yeah, it can. And we have triple overlap right here between 45, 48, 55, and 58. Can it go higher? Yes. Because wave one is the shortest wave. Wave three would not be the shortest. Wave five would then be the longest. And that can take us all the way up to 46. So now you can see how I'm building my zones. Again, these are Fibonacci extensions and they relate one wave to an, its other way in the same sequence. So <clears throat> like this Fibonacci retracements gives us retracements for the B wave as it's related to the A wave. It's an irregular, it's fulfilling its destiny. It has come up, first it broke 236, then it broke 382, and not by a whole lot, it could just slip overnight and come back down and that's it because we can consider that this would be done now let me go back down to that 30 minute chart and we're going to take a look inside if indeed this is one two and this is one two three four five well i can add another layer but it's really going to get messy so but that other layer again it brings us back up into these zones there's a there's a 48, 55, and 58 level. And I think that if I were to run Fibonacci's from here to here and down, you're gonna come up into that same area for a fifth wave, maybe a little bit higher. So we continue to have a cluster of resistance zones. So that's why I just continue to look for all of this to come to a conclusion because I'm getting too many waves that are related and now within the same uh, degree meeting up. And then I go out one degree and they meet up. And then I go on another degree and they meet up. And that's very important to when we're trying to put together, where does it all stop? For the current count, where does it all stop? So right now, it's, this is my zone. And if it goes through, we know we have additional resistance above. But right now, as long as downside continues to be shallow, and right today, that the hourly 20, and even, oh, this is the 30 minute 20, but you could take it down the 15 minute 20, the five minute 20, they tended to hold those pullbacks. And for sure, the 50s, um, even like the one, the two, and the five, they were holding pullbacks. And so as we got up higher, I would continue to believe that that's going to be the way until we get our ultimate top in and the market turns and begins to form its next leg down. So limited downside, unless it starts to break down and then we'd be looking at least at the 30, if not the hourly chart to see what it breaks down. If it breaks below the 50, now we're starting to look a little bit more like, uh-oh, but we've got a lot of ground to, to take out. A lot of fluff got put up into this thing. 
we're sitting above 4,500 and they were trading like this was the most comfortable zone on the, on the planet. And, and this, so did I, you know, I mean, you just go in and trade the number and that's all these algorithms are doing. They're doing numbers, calculations, numbers, that's it. So tomorrow downside should be limited. Upside should maybe get us up into here and then we'll see what happens. After we're gonna leave it, the next update will be Tuesday the 31st.